I'm Steve for This Look With Cars, and this is a 1957 MG MGA. When this car was put into its storage unit, there was something wrong with it. It was leaking a lot of oil from someplace, and since then, the owner had moved many states away. The owner of the storage units needed the car moved, so I went down and picked it up, and I really don't know anything about the car, except that we could see an oil trail from when the car was put into the storage unit. The car has been stored for several years and I don't even know if it will start. So let's take a look at the car and see if we can figure out what's wrong. Since it was leaking oil, I think the first thing we should do is pop the hood, see if it has any oil in it. Okay, this is an MGB engine, not an MGA engine. We get the prop rod set and then we can take a closer look. This engine is a 1.8 liter from an MGB. It also looks like it's using the carburetors from a B. An MGA would have banjo fittings on the float bowls. So this car probably runs down the road pretty well. The oil level is still fine. Let's turn the key and see if the battery is still charged. Well, let's turn the key, see what happens. Nothing. Absolutely nothing happened. Let's see if the battery is even connected. The batteries are located back here behind the seats. Let's remove this carpet. Looks like the panel wasn't even held in. Oh, those don't look good. What we're looking at here is two six volt car batteries. And it looks like they were not charged during the winter in the storage and both of them have cracked. This one over here has a big bulge and a crack in it. The car wasn't connected to it but I doubt these batteries work at all. So the first thing I need to do is get these batteries out of here and clean up the battery acid the best I can. Before I touch anything, I'm going to try to vacuum up as much of this battery acid as possible so I don't get it all over the place. This is a spare tire right here. So I'm going to open the trunk and pull the spare tire back so I have more room in here to work with these brackets. Now I can push this back into that pocket, exposing all the bolts for the battery tie downs. I'll get these out, take them to the store, get our new batteries and get them set in there. I have the batteries out now and these were interstate batteries, uh, part number 17 HF. And believe it or not, these are no longer available in the United States. They've discontinued this battery. That might sound crazy for those of you who are in the UK because you can get plenty of these batteries, but I have not been able to find another set of these batteries now here in the US. So what I've chosen to do is get one of these 26R batteries, and I'm going to try to fit this into the battery box. This of course is 12 volt. The old batteries were 6 volt, run in series to produce 12 volt. So I'm going to put this single battery on one side, and then I will have to move some of the battery cables around so that it connects to only one battery instead of two. If we look at the old battery boxes, it's pretty much set up that you can only fit a 7 inch by 7 inch battery in there. So to fit this larger battery, I'm going to have to cut that back lip off so that the battery can sit flat on there. And then I'm hoping to use the original bracket to secure it, but I might need longer J-hooks to do so. So first I'll get the back of this box cut out. What I've done is I've cut a slot in the back on both sides, and then I'll just fold this back end down, giving the battery a little more area to rest on. And it also means this could be bent back up and made back the way it was if someone wanted to do so in the future. This car now has an MGB engine in it and it's been changed to negative ground. So we have a cable over here that connects to ground, goes up to the battery. Now this one, which used to connect to the battery over here, we need to extend so that it can reach the terminal on this battery. So to extend it, I'm going to use the old cable that went between the two batteries. It has both a negative end and a positive end. So I can just cut the cable, cut this connector off, 
put them together and I'll have the end that I need for that battery on the end of this cable, which will also extend it over far enough to reach the new battery. This cable ran from this battery all the way up to the starter. So it's impractical to pull this down. And that's why I'm just going to extend this. We'll get the car running. It doesn't make sense to, at this point, replace this entire cable. To join the two cables together, I'm going to use a butt connector and then slide over some heat shrink over it to insulate it. Now I can route this over to the battery, get it tied up so it doesn't get into the prop shaft. And hopefully now we'll be ready to see if the car will run. I'm pretty happy how this turned out. I was even able to use the original bracket to hold the battery in. Time to try this again. You can hear the fuel pump. Fuel pump stopped. Oh, there it goes. stopped again so we know it's not pumping fuel out everywhere let's pull out the choke and then try the starter we're building up oil pressure but I'm thinking we don't have any spark already underneath the car we're seeing some oil so that must be where the leak is Let's see if we can track this down before we get the engine running. It doesn't look like there's any oil up here, but if you look down there below the oil filter, it looks like there's some oil. So I think that's where the leak is. Let's put the car back up. The leak is definitely dripping off of the oil filter canister. I'm hoping that this just became loose. I'm going to tighten that bolt on the end of the canister. We'll see if that stops the leak. That was pretty loose. These old cars have a lot of vibrations. If you don't get things tight, they can easily vibrate loose. The distributor on this car has points. So for as long as it's been sitting, I'm sure that they've corroded and are not working anymore. Let's pop this cap and take a look. When you remove the rotor, our points are located right here. If I turn the ignition on, the lobe of this cam right here is going to open and close these points like this. And if we spin the engine, we should see a little spark coming off of right here. And I can even open and close this manually. Okay, there is a spark. If you can see that, there is a spark coming off of that. So I think the points are working. We know we have spark at the distributor, so let's make sure that we have spark at the spark plug itself. Oh, 
we'll crank the engine over and we'll see the spark right here if it's making it up to the spark plug. We definitely have spark. The engine is turning over, so our problem must be with the fuel system. But maybe the float bowls aren't opening completely. So I'm gonna give them a little tap with the hammer. I have the fuel pump on right now. And if these open up and let more fuel in, we should hear the pump pump. And we should also see some movement right here. Pumped a couple times, but not really much of any difference. I'm going to give it a little shot of starter fluid just to help it out. We need to clean those valves up so that we have good compression and see if the engine starts. I'm pretty surprised this has not fired off yet. So let's take a plug out and see what that looks like. The good news is we did all that cranking and it doesn't look like it's leaking oil anymore. It's a little dirty, but it looks fine. I'm going to clean it up with the torch before I put it back in. I'm going to do this with all four spark plugs. This next one is a completely different story. This one is very black. So it's a good thing I'm taking them all out and cleaning them. Look at how clean that electro gets after you burn everything off of it. Next one, also very black. And the last one, about the same as the first one was. So our middle two cylinders were the two black ones. Let's try starting it again. Let's double check one of these middle cylinders, make sure it is firing. Okay, we are getting spark there. So again, I'm back to thinking this is a fuel problem. Let's pop the top of this float bowl off real quick. Just take a look inside here, see how much fuel is getting in. Plenty of fuel in here. It doesn't look too dirty. So I'll put that back on. I'm just shaking this to see if I can feel that if the float filled up with fuel at all. Let's check this one as well. This one is also full. There's a little bit of goo on this gasket. Not sure what this stuff is. Looks like the gasket tore and somebody tried to put some stuff there, but you're not gonna find much that is resistant to fuel. So just don't try to repair your fuel gaskets with silicone and things like that. I hope some of that sealant didn't fall down into the float bowl. And it's actually clogging the fuel from this carburetor from getting into the engine. When switching a car from positive ground to negative ground, some people don't realize that you need to switch the wires on your coil. This coil is marked a positive here 
and a negative here. So let's make sure that we do have positive here and negative here. Otherwise, we will have a weak spark. The engine will run, but the spark will be weaker than it should be. I'm going to connect my red positive lead to the positive side of the coil, my other lead to the negative side. And if this is a positive number, we know that it's hooked up correctly. If it's a negative number, the coil is hooked up in reverse. So the key's on and we're seeing a negative 10 volts. So the coil is actually hooked up backwards. Our positive is coming in here on the negative side of the coil and our negative is over there. So I need to reverse these and that should give us a stronger spark. Let's hook up the spark tester again. Make sure that we still have spark. Get the coil wired this way. Looked like we had a nice spark there. Let's give it another try now. yet I have to keep pumping the gas I can get it revved up get those valves cleaned up get it warmed up a little bit oil pressure looks good the car is now idling on its own I did have to turn the idle screw up a slight bit we could definitely improve how this is running but I think I'm gonna leave that for next time that's gonna be it for today I was afraid when I started on this car that I might just jump in and it'll start right up. But that just goes to show you can't judge a book by its cover. This car looks great, but mechanically there were issues. In fact, this one threw me through a couple loops that I wasn't expecting. If you want to see more videos on this MG, MGA, comment below. And just so you don't miss another video on it, click subscribe.